Mm -mm. Mm. Oh, excuse me. Whew. Whew. I drank that a little fast. That, that had some burn to it. Okay, well, back again, back again. Now, uh, into our next segment here, we are now pivoting to a, an interesting comment. We heard it earlier this season, but apparently it was hashed out again. Uh, there is still the belief, and I know we're talking about Shaq in this case for this quote, but uh, there is still the belief that what KP needs to do to be more effective and to help control these games better is to get into the post. Now, KP has never been a great post-up player. I, I think he's shown at times growth in that area, and his catch and turnaround jumper game has been pretty good. But it's interesting that we're talking about a guy averaging over 30 points a game in the bubble. And we're also talking about the fact that he's not only getting buckets, he's also converting at the line. He's shooting 10 and a half free throws per game in the four games of this restart. And he's shooting 88.6% at the line. So 30 points a game, 10 and a half free throws a game, nearly 90% from the stripe. The guy is pretty much already doing it. Now, like by, by doing it, I don't mean like doing it as in like, he's already posting up, what are you talking about? No, I mean, he's already doing work to the extent where you're like, hey, it's hard to ask really anybody to do much more than they're already doing in that capacity. But it's also rare to try and incorporate that at this stage. What KP added during the suspended part of the season was the one-footed Dirk fade. We've seen it at times here and there. It's a thing of beauty. Not quite the Dirk one, but it's still nice. He's added elements like that to his game. We know that he's slimmed down. And I think he said he's running about 10 to 15 pounds lighter right now than he did during the season. And while that might sound like a bad thing when the Mavericks and at, you know, at times the Knicks even prior to the Mavericks wanted him to pack on muscle to try and help his body be more resistant to injury. But what he says is this is more of his natural weight, not bulked up weight. And so he feels more fluid and natural. And even when he's shooting, he doesn't feel so bulky and it helps him be a little bit more finesse. That's the thing worth considering here for KP, but I don't understand this notion that they're like, hey, if KP wants to be effective, the only thing he can do is go into the low post because, hey, he's seven foot three. He doesn't have the Bulbon frame and wingspan. I mean, he's got a crazy wingspan, but it's not the same in that regard. So I don't like this notion of this isn't how your big typically responds, ergo, he needs to get down in the low post. To me, that feels counterintuitive. But the real question is whether or not the Mavericks are winning. And right now, they're not. Is that KP's fault? No. And I think it's silly to suggest that. I think it's silly to suggest, hey, if KP had gotten in the low post more, they would have beaten the Clippers. I don't think that's the case at all. KP in this game, as I said earlier, 13 of 26, 50%. Three of eight on threes, 10 of 11 at the line. Or excuse me, that was actually game one. That was the Houston game. Game two, KP followed that up with 30 points, eight boards, 10 of 20, two of five on threes, eight of 11 at the line. Then in the Mavericks win, he added in 22, seven and two, that one, his shot wasn't there. He was 6 of 18 from the field, 0 of 7 from 3, but 10 of 11 at the line. If you want to make an argument of, hey, the outside shot's not working, try something a little different, that would be your game to point to. But even then, I would argue that it's not been a strong element of his game all season, and if it's not something he really worked into his artillery, putting him down there is not... It's not a feature built into this Mavericks offense, and we've talked about the Mavericks... Uh, and the offensive efficiency before. So with the Mavericks offensive efficiency this season and the fact that they're asking KP to take more of these threes per game, that they're asking him to help stretch the floor, they're asking him to take more threes than he has at any point in his career in terms of per game. That's 
yeah, that's not something to gloss over and that's something that you can have a conversation, but I don't think the answer is immediate, say, hey, go to the low post. That's not his game. He, the mid-range was his game in New York. In this last game, uh, KP, 30 and 9, 9 of 19, 3 of 7 from 3, 9 of 9 at the stripe. So I like that he's getting to the line. I like that he's converting at the line. I like that he's averaging 30 points per game, but by no means do I feel like it makes sense at this stage to try and set up some isos for him on the low block. That's not really something our offense does. Our offense is about spacing the floor and trying to let Luka create. Now, are you going to get opportunities where you can work KP in the high post? Sure, work him from the elbows, work him in the high post. That makes sense. That is comfortable for him. But putting him down on the block with his back to the basket and telling him to go one-on-one, -on -one, not so much. There's times he'll catch it and he'll back a guy down there and see if he can do something, but it's not quite your traditional post-up. I feel like this is another situation where you have these guys like Shaq, you know, seven-footer. They look at someone like KP and they say, well, you're, you're a big guy and enforce your will on some of these teams. It's not quite that black and white. In modern basketball, it's not that black and white. KP is not the unicorn because he backs guys down on the low block. That's not what makes him a unicorn. He's a unicorn because he can shoot like a small forward and he can move much more agile than any seven foot three guy probably on the planet. I mean, Boban is seven foot three as well. Just look at the difference in how they move and how they like, uh, you know, how fluid they are on the court. It's night and day. I love Bobby, but. He, he doesn't have near the fluidity of motion that KP does. So I don't like this notion that people are saying, hey, you gotta, you're a tall guy, you gotta get down on the block and you gotta do something there. It feels to me kind of like what we've talked about before with regard to some of these guys. Hold on here. Feels kind of like what we've talked about before with some of these guys saying, well, you know, you have to, in order to be successful, you have to be a good defense. They ignore the fact that in the Houston game, you had the top two offenses in the league going, one of which is, from an efficiency standpoint, the most historically efficient offense of all time. They ignore that, and they instead kind of poke fun and laugh at the fact that, hey, first team to get a stop wins, even though we're in like the second quarter and it's 85-75. I get it. You'd like to see a little bit more resistance defensively, and Houston did find that in the clutch time to their credit. But it's still a situation where it's like you're kind of not only missing the point, you're locked into a, an old form of thinking about how this has to be done. It's archaic. And as a result, you're kind of undercutting the game to casual fans turning it on. Like, if I was not a fan of the Mavericks or the Rockets, God knows I'd never be a fan of the Rockets, and I turned on that game in the opener of the bubble, and I saw, hey, wow, it's 85-75. I would probably be really impressed by that. Like, wow, you never see NBA games scoring this high. And it's not like everything's uncontested layups. You see splashed threes. You're seeing mid-range, a little bit of mid-range. Modern NBA doesn't have a lot of that, especially the Rockets. But uh, you're seeing a lot of this give and take in a way that you don't typically see. And so you might say like, oh, that's really cool. That's impressive. But then you hear the broadcasters basically laughing about how both teams suck on defense, and you're like, oh, huh, I thought it was more about the offense. It feels like it's undercutting the game they're trying to pump up as a big game and a big performance offensively. It's like, if you want me to stay tuned in, you should probably not say this game kind of sucks from a defensive standpoint. There's different ways to frame it is what I'm saying. I think the NBA, as much as it's tried to move forward with this notion of, uh, you know, the Warriors, how they change things, and the Rockets, how they change things, how everything, modern NBA wants to be a three or a layup, basically. The mid-range game is dying off for most teams, other than, like, the Spurs, who have DeRozan uh, on their roster. It's largely a forgotten art. And I get that, but I also think that just like you can be locked into that kind of archaic thinking, where even as the rest of the league is evolving to this new method, you're still saying, well, hey, this is the way it's always been done, so overwhelmingly history's on my, favor, or on my side. If you look at more recent champions and more recent you know, perennial contenders, it's moving away from that for the most part. 
That's all I'm saying in this regard. So I think Shaq, while while I understand that you know the TNT crew is very entertaining and Shaq's got a hell of a lot of skins on the wall, he's an all-time great, just an unstoppable, undeniable force. It does feel like he sticks to his same talking points on certain subjects, and this largely feels like one of those where it's, hey, you're seven foot three, get down on the block. I want to see you enforce your will. Well, he's averaging 30, and he's getting to the line, and he's knocking him down at the line. So he's already kind of enforcing his will in a different way. If he was six foot four and averaging those, you wouldn't be saying he's not enforcing his will. So understand that the player type and the play style is different, and it's not always the straightforward black and white mess that you make it out to be because that's the way it's always been.